You're listening to Rod and Style Radio, the latest podcast brought to you by RodandStyle.com, which is where you can find links for merch, videos from our YouTube channel, along with stories and tech talk from some of the greatest folks in the culture. So grab the wheel, it's about to get wild. You've tuned in to Rod and Style. So every time I see Iski, he thinks I'm one of Don Waldron's kids, I guess. Because every time, like, so every time I see him, he's like, "Oh, it's Don's boy, right? Don's boy," and that's what he always called me. Um, it's fine. I never, and I, I, I corrected him like the first few times, and then as I was like, you know what, you're, because when I first met him, I think he was 97 or 98 the first time I met him. Um, and then I just, I stopped trying to correct him after he turned a hundred. I was like, at this point, he's a hundred years old. I think he's just going to go with it. But no, it's funny. Cause every time I see him, um, if we're like, if we go to a shop or I see him at an event, he always like, Hey Chuck, do you have one of my books? And I'm like, yeah, I do. He's like, all right, cool. Then he gets one. He signs and hands it to me. <laughs> so now I got like a stack of whiskey books. I love you it. Know? Oh, nice. <laughs> it's funny. So I just, at a certain point I was like, can you just, just stop signing my name and just sign it, you know? <laughs> so, but no, he's, he's always been like the coolest dude to talk to. Cause one of the things next time you guys are up here, hopefully my house will be a little bit more set up and I'll show you. Cause I started hanging up all my memorabilia and I forgot how much crap I have or whatever. But one of my most, uh, two of my most prized possessions is that rocking chair. Uh, I think you guys saw probably on rod and style that I posted it, that Mikey, uh, Smith, oh, the uh, drag chair. Tom Mike, yeah, yes. the drag racing chair. So that came from Kobe, uh, Ger, uh, Kobe Gerowitz, Gerowitz, um, him and his brother Mark. Uh, they uh, uh, so Kobe owned Church Magazine or still owns Church Magazine. He's the guy that owns the Van Gogh mm-hmm. van, you know. And uh, so his dad bought that erect uh, front end drag chair frame, and then they you know chopped it off and turned it into a rocking chair. So when he went to sell it he put it on his instagram account church emporium and i told jen that i wanted the chair and jen's like no you don't need that chair and i was like i want the chair though and she's like you don't need that chair and i was like that's not the point i want the chair you know <laughs> and uh she's like well you know you don't need the chair and i was like fine whatever you know so we went down down towards redondo beach where he lives and uh, I was going by to see, I think I was going by to see Kobe anyway for something. But so she let the beans spill about halfway down. She goes, I bought that chair for you. And I'm like driving. <laughs> and I'm like, what chair are you talking about? And she's like, the rocking chair. And I was like, no, Kobe sold it. And she's like, yeah, he sold it to me. And I was like, well, so nice. bitch. So that's the day I knew I fell in love with her. Um, but yeah. <laughs> that, and then my second thing is I haven't, I have one of Iski's old drawing tables. Oh, um, wow. You know, like the actual wooden drawing table or whatever. Yeah. So Don Don had it. He got it off of uh, Lanny. Lanny? Yeah, from uh, LTR Motors or whatever. He did. He's worked with Iski for 50 years or 60 or whatever years. But anyway, so he got a table and Don was talking to me about it and he goes, he, he was like, oh, yeah, this is right. This is table or whatever. And I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, I didn't really think anything of it. And then um, we uh, one day we went down to see Iski. It was actually uh, December 2020. Or maybe no, it was January 2020. Yeah, because it was right before the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going down from Ridgecrest to L.A. And we're going to go by and see Iski. And he's like, hey, I want to bring this table with me because I want to show it to Iski. And I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, so I throw it in the back of my truck and off we go, you know, we go see Iski. We're talking to Iski. Don's showing him some blower stuff. He's going to, because uh, uh, Iski was making a cam for Don for his, uh, um, what are those little bitty cars? I forgot what those little bitty cars are called now. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Midgets? But no, uh, no, it's a car, actual car company. Don's got one little blue, made a little bitty four cylinders. I want to say court, but it's not a court. Um, Zach, name off English cars. Go. <laughs> this is going to take a long time. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. Um, 
Uh, that was made in 1947. Okay. All right. Well, I'll think about that randomly here in a few minutes, and I'll just yell it out. But that, so that's we pulled the table out. How of we do things. Yeah, well, that's, that's all right. Yeah, I know. I listen to the podcast. Um, <laughs> wow. No, I just wow. laugh. Wow. Okay. Got, what? What? I'm, I'm telling. I listen to the podcast. <laughs> and then random stuff comes out of your guys' mouth, just like everybody else. It's fine. Um, but also, I pulled we, I pulled a table out of the back of the truck. And Don talking to Isky, and Isky's like, oh, yeah, blah, blah, whatever, you know. And he asks Isky to sign it. Um, when he does, he's like, oh, yeah, Don, I'll sign it for you. And he goes, no, actually, will you sign it for Chuck? Um, you know, I'm giving it to him for Christmas. And so that was my Christmas gift from Don. <laughs> nice. So, yeah. That's awesome. So I have a video of Isky signing it. So I have this drawing table that sits here, and it's it's signed. I mean, it's, it's, the drawing table is not big itself. I think it's, like, 36 wide or whatever. But he drew – you wrote all the way across it like hi racing brother chuck and his Kadarian. so his signature is actually like two feet long <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's kind of crazy so a long last name oh yeah yeah i mean i couldn't spell that last name now if you asked me to i think that's why everybody just called him iski <laughs> um, probably why where's that rocking chair at right now is that in your living room or is that like a, a den thing uh, well, it's, it's gonna. Well, it was in my living room, and then Mikey had it at his house when he did the interior. It's currently sitting at Scratch's shop because uh, oh, okay. uh, Scratch is gonna letter the side panels for me because you know it has this big oh, purple nice. purple metal flake side panel. So he's gonna put hot rod chuck on it. So like I'm the driver, you know, and then stripe it. Yeah. So he'll probably actually do that. <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. Days. It was a really yeah, comfy chair. I don't want to get out of it. Yeah, we got to see it the last time we came up and uh, hung out with y'all at the shop for, what was it, Hot yeah. Rods and Hot Dogs? Yeah. Something. Hot Rods and Hot Dogs. Yeah, the next one's 22nd of July. So, yeah, we got a lot of cool stuff coming up. Scratch is painting some helmets today um, for, uh, or painting a helmet today for um, Glory Days. Uh, it's that bike show in Pittsburgh happening on the 24th of September. Because uh, me, me, Scratch, and Johnny will all be there. Because uh, Hussy and Gnarly Magazine have a booth there. Oh, that's rad! So I'm gonna go. We're gonna go to a bike show. You said helmets anyway. right now, and I swore that you said that Scratch was painting the homeless. <laughs> <laughs> painting the homeless? Yeah. <laughs> he's just, he's just running around with a with a spray gun. Just, <laughs> there you go. With a metal flake. Brand you know, new. As I like, or I, as I like to call it, man glitter. <laughs> um, I was recording today painting those helmets. This is like, this episode is already, this is already a random episode. This is Chuck talks about random shit episode. I love like it. He was spraying a helmet today. And I'm like videoing, you know, and I keep getting in the way because that's what I do. You know, there's like metal flake going everywhere. And I, and I, I just go, man, that's a lot of man glitter and he goes it's metal flake i was like uh it's man glitter <laughs> i don't think you found it as humorous as i did nobody really but. wants to hear you're spreading your man glitter everywhere <laughs> that's not that have the same ring to <laughs> that you think <laughs> yeah I, mean, I think it does you know like just like uh gnarly magazine way. gnarly magazine did that shirt uh i don't know if you ever saw it as a it was a metal flake and it said gnarly across it and like gold metal flake um, it was, it was a bitching shirt. I think, I think it, we may have a couple left or something, but or we print them at some point, but it was, uh, metal flake gnarly and gold across the chest. And every time I wore it, I would, I would take a picture, post it up and say like Mangler Monday or something. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, was, Johnny was just like, can you stop doing that? And I was like, no, it's Mangler Monday. <laughs> you know? Oh man, today's Monday. Oh, I have to make a post. Today is Monday. Today, hey, Mangler yep. Monday. So it today. Welcome Hashtag. to Monday, folks. <laughs> That's how my Mondays go. Yeah, pretty Neon much. lights and man glitter. <laughs> man, I had a cramp shirt that was gold glitter all over the front of it, and every time I wore it, that glitter would come oh, off. It's metal flake or man glitter. Man glitter. It was, every glitter. time that man glitter would come off the shirt, like. I mean, I'd be covered in it like every single time. Now I, I still have the shirt, and it's just like completely like deteriorated because most of the paint on it was man glitter. <laughs> Welcome to See, Monday, it's, folks. It's, it's, it feels nice to say man glitter, doesn't it? It does. Like it does. you guys mock it, but I mean, just if you just say man, like Zach, just say man glitter, man glitter. 
See, does that not feel good? <laughs> That'll be a hashtag by the end of the day. <laughs> it feels embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Feels intimate. Right, so we're gonna use we're gonna use some uh, blue man glitter on the blue Martian. I like this. We definitely are. <laughs> I'm gonna call it flake though. <laughs> stand your oh, stand your ground, what? Zach. Stand your ground. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me sleep better at night, at least. What man glitter does? Oh my god, <laughs> flake for sure. Oh okay. Reflections. <laughs> Reflections. <laughs> Did I ever tell you guys you guys got that story wrong, by the way? Yes. With uh, Tidwell, right? Yeah. yeah. I, could, yeah, so I, I got remember. The, actually, I got the mirror sitting here Why on my shelf. You? He called you Peaches, right? No. Peaches, oh. yeah. Yeah, Peaches. <laughs> yeah, Gerald Tidwell has a nickname. A lot of people have nicknames for me. Peaches is probably the nicest of them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, folks, if you haven't figured it out by now, you're listening to Rod and Style Radio, <laughs> and your uh, the culture's favorite couple, the custom couple, is sitting with Zach Parks and Chuck, but not actually in the vicinity of, because we are on a three-way call. This is a, this is the first three-way that we've done. Hey, this is technically a four-way because there's four <laughs> of us. So. so we can say three way and four way, but we can't say man glitter. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Now he's figuring it out. Yeah. I like this. I feel like, oh. there's, I feel like there's a double standard going on. <laughs> oh, there's more than double. I can tell you that. <sighs> this is getting worse and worse. It will. It will why, by the end of this. Why am I on the phone with you people? <laughs> yeah, I said you people. <laughs> Damn it. Well. We wanted to jump on a phone call, and the the time that I uh, text Zach and I was like, "Hey, we got to do this." Zach was like, "We are going to do this," but I am on a, a uh, flight in about twenty minutes, headed to Hawaii. So, how was your trip to Hawaii, Zach? Oh, it was awesome, beautiful. We had a uh, condo on the beach, just relaxed, took it easy, just what I needed. <laughs> I bet, man. I we okay. we have not taken that trip because I I for once I I flew for the first time this year to New York and that was what three hours. So what was the trip to Hawaii? That that's a hell of a lot longer than three hours. Oh yeah, it's like five hours, then five hours again. Ugh. No, thank and, uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You get pretty sick of looking at your phone after a while. Like God, can we just land already? <laughs> <laughs> but Zach, uh, I'm tired of watching movies. We have been watching uh, your movies lately. Your episodes of uh, the Blue Martian that uh, we just started putting out onto Rod and Style TV, and like that's already like going big because for one, every time I watch it, I keep like uh, saying the intro as it's coming across the screen as if I was the announcer for like the leave it to the beaver show. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm definitely digging where you're going with it. So tell our folks where y'all uh, grabbed this car from and, and how this whole story has been laying out so far. Well, maybe we need to get you to announce the intro. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> right. That would be cool. I'll work on that. Yeah. Uh, we got it in Fairmont, West Virginia. I drove like six hours from where I live to go pick it up. And uh, it just so happened to be during a really bad snowstorm. Like, what was it? Like October or somewhere around there. I went and picked it up. And uh, the only day it snowed is my whole drive. It was terrible. The, the trailer was fishtailing all the way there. But I said, screw it. I'm going anyways. And uh, I uh, already made a deal with this guy to trade my tea bucket for this pickup truck um i was trying to sell my tea bucket and this guy offered me to trade it and as soon as i saw the truck i was like yes yes i'll do that because <laughs> i had a fiberglass tea bucket and of course real steel is always you know it's always cooler oh, of course so i was like well i'll take the rusty old truck i don't mind you know and when i saw it even closer it just keep getting cooler and cooler man the old hot rods are so much cooler than hot rodding a, a model a that's never been hot rodded before you know yeah it just, uh, you know, has more history and character, which I didn't know what it was because uh, the guy who had the, the truck at the time, uh, I think his name was Ronnie. He's a neighbor of the actual owner. And the actual owner um, 
I'm trying to remember everybody's name. I think it was uh, George Hose. Uh, he passed away, so he just bought it. The neighbor bought it mm-hmm. and just didn't know what to do with it. I mean, the, the truck is, I mean, it's pretty rusty. It doesn't have floorboards in it and stuff like that. But, um, you know, for me, it's a roadster. There's not much to fix, honestly. Even if I replaced every panel, there wouldn't be that many panels. Yeah, there, there's not a whole lot to them. Yeah, short. It has a super short bed on it, even too. So, it's a. It kind of to me, it kind of reminds me of a tea bucket sort of type build, kind of like an open tea. But I just thought it was too cool. I had to have it. Just had to have it. So once you uh, once you got it home, uh, you know, you started tearing it apart. That's what we've been starting to see in the uh, the videos. Is uh, yeah. You know, where you, you, you know, you sat with it and started looking at, you know, how things were done with it before and what, you know, the plans that you're making to, to change it now. How far have you gotten with that? Um, I'm almost done boxing the frame. And once the frame's done, it goes back on the axles and I can put the body back on and do the floorboard. So I'm almost to where I'm building it back up. So we took it all the way down, every nut and bolt completely apart. And, uh, you know. When something's been sitting since the 70s, which we found out later, it's been sitting since like 1972, you know, things were done different back in the day. But mm-hmm. then on top of that, you know, things have been sitting for so long. You really can't trust any any nut or bolt or weld, stuff like that. You really got to go over the whole thing. So, you know, I'm getting to do that. And uh, so far, it's working out really good. And all the sponsors have been great on this build. This has been you know, this has been really fun. I'm so excited to go out in the garage and like get get dirty on it. You know, uh, who's been helping you with it? Well, physically, it's just been me, but um, Chuck and Scratch and Redson and uh, even Chris, they all been throwing in ideas, throwing in parts, stuff like that. So it's been a it's been a big help. Um, it was funny. We all got together and decided to uh, build this truck as a collaboration, and we made a design for it. And ends up, we end up finding out the original owners. And the last time the truck was built, it, the design that we had for it ended up being exactly the same, you know, with what it actually was. So it's funny how things work out. Yeah, I remember when y'all were first starting to talk about doing it, and uh, you know, we we've talked a little bit about it here and there. Uh, that you didn't know a whole lot about the truck and out of, you know, just creating the videos and starting to put out what you were doing with it, you actually had people reach out to you that were original owners of the truck and started giving you even more information on it. So, you know, how did, uh, you know, what, what all did they tell you that you were were already working towards like that were going to be kind of the, the similarities of how they wanted it built originally? Well, when I got it, the engine mount and transmission mounts were cut out of it, so I couldn't tell what kind of engine transmission that was in it. And uh, I had, you know, I thought if it was blue, which it is when we got it, it's like, well, we could just repaint it blue. And it blue with, for me, I like blue and white. It's a great classy, you know, color combo. It's like, well, we'll just go with blue and white and have like a white rag top for it and stuff like that. And uh, you know, we wanted it to be like a traditional 60s hot rod. So usually, you know, you put a different rear axle in your Model A so you go a little bit faster, which turns out to have two different types of rims back then because you couldn't just get any lug pattern, any style that you wanted. Mm-hmm. So we were doing just all super 60s style build. And uh, then we finally got in contact with the original owners and uh, they sent me a picture of it. And the picture from 1965 is almost exact like our um illustration that chris drew up for us um uh, chuck can you pronounce chris's last name i don't want to butcher it hardcore piscatelli piscatelli yeah oh yeah, yeah we yeah, had from piscatelli design yeah. yeah yeah we had uh we had chris on on uh one of our episodes here a while back that that dude is so cool to talk to oh yeah yeah chris, got is, a, lot chris is a great guy he's easy to work with too yeah. But uh, what's crazy about the Blue Marsh is when Zach Zach found it, it was one of those things of the, one of the first conversations we had. It'd be like, oh, it'd be cool if we ever found any history out on this car, right? And then so yeah. me being me, uh, I love nail heads, you know, and I was like, well, let's put a nail head in it, you know, and I, I talked them all into the nail head. 
but you know, come to find out once we posted the first video, you know, the two previous owners and Zach, correct me if I'm wrong. The last guy that owned in the sixties was trying to buy it back, but just couldn't afford it or something. Right. Yeah. He's trying to buy it back from the guy that I got it from and couldn't afford it. And, you know, he, he uh, had his plans for the build too. And it very much what I'm doing right now is what he told me. That's exactly what I wanted to do with it. If I could afford to buy it back. Yeah, that's the great thing I think for what we're doing is we're building something that would have been his dream in the in the sixties, you know, early sixties or something like that. And like what uh Zach was talking about with the wheel combo, a lot of times in the sixties, you know, guys were building their cars between paychecks. Mm-hmm. You know, so they could afford the back wheels this time, but by the time they get the front wheels, it'd be something different. You know, and so that's a lot of times if you look at cars, especially drag racing car uh, race cars or anything like that a lot of the wheel combos being different wheels front and back you know some of it has to like when you go to a dragster is a little bit different but some of the super stock cars and stuff like that the reason they did that is they could only afford one set of wheels at a time you know so scratch had a set has a set of custom craggers uh to give it that offset look of a different wheel in the back to the front that real 60 show drag car style mm. um, which works out nice and then the last build had a had a uh, 283 in it. Um, so Zach actually found one. He had actually worked on a truck. Or Zach, I guess you can tell the story better than I can on that. But you worked on a truck that or a car for a customer that had a 283 in it or something, right? Yeah, it was a 65 Chevy. And uh, he pulled it out to put a 350 in it instead of the 283. And that was a couple of years ago. And I called him. I was like, hey, you still got two, that 283? He's like, yeah, I got like four of them. Just come over and pick one. <laughs> and then I picked the one from that that 65. And I was like, yeah, I recognize this. It it ran. You know, I remember it running. It didn't make any noise. And uh, this guy's kind of like a hoarder of car parts. And he, he pulled like the rockers out of it because he needed it for a different motor or something weird. But it should be a good motor. I haven't pulled it apart yet. I'm at least going to take the heads off and drop the pan and, you know, do all the new gaskets and stuff. But it should be a good motor, really. Is the well, crazy thing to me is that the guy that owned the last guy to own it and drive it said that with the stock 283, you know, if I'm not mistaken, had a two barrel on it, it would lift the front tires. Oh, yeah, man. yeah. I talked and, to Mark Hose, yeah, Mark yeah. Hose was the last one to own it, and he's the one, one of the brothers that's still alive. He built it in 1957, but when he put the 283 in it in uh, the mid 60s, he said it'd pull, it'd pull the front tires off the ground. I don't know how much, but, you know, even just lifting the front left off the ground would be pretty cool. And uh, the cool story that he told me is when the V8 Mustang came out, that that little truck with the 283, he said he's whooping the Mustang's ass all over the street. So I thought that was a cool story. Yeah, that's what we like to hear. Yeah, so what we're going to do, what, Zach, what we talked about with Zach and stuff is, like, we're just going to go ahead and go a step further. So the 283 he had in there, you know, a stock 283 with a two-barrel, you know, we're going to take it a step further or maybe three or four steps further. Heads, <laughs> cam, and uh, dual quad intake. Oh, it used to be a screamer in the little Model A frame. Yeah. So basically, I mean, it's, they, we're, we're just little Model A is going to basically have, you know, the 283 equivalent of a Corvette engine or something, you know, with dual quads and a nice lumpy cam and stuff like that. You know, so it's going to be something that's got an old school feel to it and um uh, you know kind of do what he um uh, what he would have done if he would have had the money to do that in the mid 60s you know we're going to build that 60s show drag car you know um i think is some people don't you know we've we posted this on the ham um and you know some people have kind of been given zach uh, shit, for lack of better terms, about not using the original frame. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put this out there for all of them to hear. If there any of them are listening, you know what they were doing in the six fifties and sixties is probably not the safest for what we want to do with this car specifically. But if you look at a lot of older cars and stuff, the, the way they welded and stuff, and Zach can tell you exactly in the frame because he's actually seen it in person. But a lot of those older welds and stuff, and the way they were doing it, just not safe for the way we drive today and how we drive on roads and the roads we have and the traffic and everything else, you know? Oh Um, yeah. I mean, to be fair though, it wasn't safe for back then either. It was just the, (laughs) it was the best that they had, 
but it still it wasn't yeah, the safest probably. thing back then either. Uh, one of the one of the things that I really love about the uh, the episodes that you've been doing, Zach, is. Uh, you know, when you showed that in the frame and the fact that, you know, the stock frame that you had taken off of there and you're standing on it and watching it flex and, you know, you yeah. you see that and you're like, this is not what you want to be happening when you've got a big horsepower engine, you know, in a small little, you know, roadster pickup that's got no weight to it. You know, yeah. You know, if a stock 283 was lifting it up, you know, I mean, just lifting up the weight of an engine for the engine to be lifting up its own weight is pretty remarkable. So, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to have been lifting that tire. Oh, yeah. I mean, it could be lifting that tire because the frame was flexing so much. Who knows? Yeah, that that very well could be. <laughs> and, you know, in torch welds and things of that nature, not a not a, a big idea of, you know, anything you want. Uh, <laughs> not not with a lot yeah. of horsepower pushing behind it. Absolutely, that probably wouldn't have put a flathead V eight in that frame. I mean, it might have been safer when it was fresh, you know, and new. But now that it's old and a little bit rusty, you know, it's it's pretty iffy just how it is. I might cut it up a little bit and make like a, a rail dragster out of it just for fun. Maybe put a four banger in it or something, but. You know, I'm not going to just throw it away. That's what most people are afraid of. I'm, I'll either hang it on the ceiling or make a little rail dragster for it. I don't know. Yeah, that'd be really cool. I like the rail dragster idea. I'm all right with that. I support that. I support that build. <laughs> yeah. I like yeah. I love rail dragsters. Cool. Oh, yeah. A little four banger. You know, do something with like uh, uh, dual, uh, dual carburetors, you know, aluminum head if you can find an overhead. We're get completely getting off topic here. Um, <laughs> well, we'll have another episode I sell those on now. So what? All right. The uh, whole heads for one now. So. Oh, the heads. Oh, well, same. There we go. Yep. See, shit, boy, how do we're already halfway there? So, between <laughs> building this one and my truck, my truck that you got to build, you got to build a, a, a dragster. Oh, um, and a dragula. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I forgot about dragula. We got a long list. A whole other. Has a whole other story. And my 60F100. Yeah. And it sounds like we yeah, got we podcasts for days on this one. <laughs> oh, yeah. You want to talk about our projects? You talk about my tea garden that I'm staring at right now. Is it a um, Japanese tea garden? This is just the fun stuff. No, it's, there's, there's literally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> nine, ten tea bodies in my backyard. Oh, you just and grow got, them wildly? Yeah, so if you actually, it's really weird. If you water one, they multiply. <laughs> the so, little rust flakes turn really into yeah, seeds, right? Yeah, I was gonna say he has he has a, a rusty thumb, not a green thumb, a rusty thumb. They just they just come out, and sprout. Thumb. I like that. <laughs> I like my that. issue is people know I like Model T, so they call me. Hey, I got this Model T. I need to sell, and it's always some stupid price I can't say no to, and they know that. <laughs> they know I, I got one. I need to sell. I'm gonna ship it down yeah. to you, Chuck. Heard. I like it. Where's We'll we'll talk about that after after the podcast. <laughs> He's like, I don't want to, I don't um, want anybody to know what kind of deal I'm getting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People can't yeah, know I, that. Then I can't make money. I told Chuck. I told Chuck if he had enough tea buckets, he doesn't have to mow his grass ever again. So I think he's working on it. These are facts. Well, especially that between that and the Chrysler 300 sitting in my backyard. Um, which, if Chris, yeah. if you're listening to the podcast, I need you to come get your car. <laughs> Just he's to- running out of tea bucket space. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, a 63 Chrysler 300 convertible takes up a lot of space. Oh, oh, Ooh. yeah, that's at least beautiful. that's at least that's at least three T's. Yeah, it is. You know, if not four. Oh. You know, so. <laughs> I, I wanted that dash for the Blue Martian so bad, but they're I can't. They're too expensive. What dash is that? The that Chrysler dash is that the bubble dash where everything's in the bubble? Uh no, this is 63. 63 was. Oh. We're getting off completely off subject again here, but 63, you know how, like, you know, Mopar was like, you know, what we should do, we should make all these bitching cars with this cool dashes and these fins and all that stuff. And they're like, yeah, man, let's do that. And then they do that and they do it very well. And then 1963 came about and they're like, well, just fuck all that. Let's just, <laughs> just, just, just fuck it. We're just gonna, you know, whatever. What's that? Sure, put that on there. They got rid of the fins and everything else. The fin, like sixty-three Chryslers are like they're 
they're so ugly they look good i guess if that makes sense would that probably be around the time that they changed their designers for that for that whole uh line of cars uh, I, had, I have no idea. They may have a 63. Uh, so 62 still had the canted headlights and the 63. They went with the, the headlights were flat, I guess, or horizontal. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a little bit different, but I don't know. I don't know when they changed designers. It's actually a good point. That may be why our listeners are like, what the fuck are these guys talking about? I don't even know <laughs> what this episode's <laughs> the about. Topic here. <laughs> <laughs> but so Blue Martian, is, it's going to be a cool little roadster pickup, you know, and it's for, uh, I'm going to get us back on track right now. Watch. You ready? <laughs> but no, we're really lucky one, one way too, is that, you know, Zach's worked with the Boiling Brothers to get uh, some parts and stuff, especially for the fixing the frames and stuff like that. And then Mill Works, um, they've been good to us with uh, suspension parts and everything. So um, if anybody from Coker's listening, we need some tires. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, yeah. High crest. If not, I'll probably, well, yeah. Yeah. If not, I'll probably buy a set of at least uh cheater slicks for the back from Cal city tires there in North Carolina. Cause I really like those tires, you know, but a big fat set of firestone cheater slicks on the back of that thing. would look. Chuck said the oh, magic yeah. words. This episode brought to you by <laughs> cheater slick culture. Done. There you go. Oh, is that all I had to say? Yeah, there Cheers you go. Slicks? I'll say that all day long. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But now the blue marsh like I'm. I know we're all excited about this build, you know, and it's going to be great. And I think once, because I think uh, Zach, your goal is to at least get it running and driving and taking it to Trog, right? Yeah, well, I'm going to. My dad. I already promised my dad he's going to drive it down the strip and park it in the corral there. So. He's going to drive that, and I'm going to drive my roadster, and uh, that's that's the goal right there. So, that would be, be wild. Painted, doesn't have to be finished. It's just got to be driving. So, that'll be super so wild. Like when is do, Trog? Yeah, um, uh, September 30th and one October, two October. Yeah, yeah. Right. We'll have to get Mel on the so, on the show before then. Some days now. Yeah, yeah, we should get Mel. On oh the yeah. Show. Yeah, actually, I should probably, I need to actually call him. But yeah, I'll call him and get him on the show. We'll edit this part out, but probably not. Um, no, we yeah. won't. We're going to put it but, out to the world so everybody will be like, did you ever get Mel on the show? Right, that gives the extra pressure of, oh shit, we need to get him on the show. Yeah, put it out in the universe, man. That That's the whole idea of this entire <laughs> thing. One of these days I'll interview you. Put it out there, it'll work out, you know? Exactly. But yeah, so, yeah well, my, my plan, I haven't... We haven't told Zach this yet, but we would really like to get the Blue Martian to uh, Lone Star Roundup uh, next year. Um, so I think that'd be a good show. It's kind of a, uh, I mean, getting it, taking it to Grand Nationals would be great, but taking a car all the way across the country is never fun. You know, I've done that a few times. Yeah, so I, mean, I think uh, halfway our, across the country goal, is good, a good goal. Oh yeah, and I think uh, Zach doesn't know this yet, Texas, but. So. Yeah, and Zach will never complain about coming to Texas. So I think we want to try to get it. Uh, you know, I think I think me and Zach talked about this before a little bit, but I think April's a, a decent goal to have it done, painted, interior done, and all that stuff, and then bring it out and kind of unveil it to the world at uh, Lone Star Roundup um, in our Ron style, beaten culture, cheers to culture. Wired Customs, Custom Couple, Scratches Garage, Booth. There's going to be like 20 other. people in one booth. <laughs> no, that's fine. Always, four chairs, get there early. You guys, right? you guys haven't, been, Musical been chairs. Show, you haven't been to a show with me yet. I always do. I always overdo a booth. I think last time Grand Nationals, our booth was 10 by 40 or 10 by 50. It looked amazing, um, too. The pictures of that booth <laughs> were amazing. Space for everybody. I'm sorry, but have you yeah. met me? When I go to shows, I go all out. So, of course, I'm going to go even more out knowing if we have a booth. Yeah, we got a booth that by. <laughs> all of us stuffed in it, too. We'll look like a clown car coming out of you. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> and then we're going to try to... Uh, this is Roundup, right? Yeah, Roundup. Oh, Roundup. Roundup. Yeah. Can't even talk. Roundup will be when the Buick goes out there. So I can fit like 50 bodies in the trunk. So we'll be fine. Yeah, we'll take the Buick. Oh, man. The Merc. We'll, we'll just have a whole bunch of blue and white cars hanging out at Roundup. <laughs> All our the cars what? are blue and white. <laughs> did, you say the, did you say the Merc? The Merc. Yeah. yeah going out to the what world. Merc? The 1950 oh, Merc that I, I bought. Just, 
Is this, uh, did you already announce it? Because I didn't see you announce we it. We announced it. We announced yeah, it we uh, on the it. episode that I hung out with you and Scratch, and we, we when we were on our way to oh, yeah. uh, Kentucky. But no, one, but no one's really seen any pictures of it. We yeah. haven't, you haven't posted any of I them. haven't posted a picture of it yet. But so. we ironically both have blue yeah, cars. I forgot we talked about it during that episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Scratch pulled it out of me. and was like, what What kind of car did you get? Like, well, shit. Now we can't it's get like, it. It's like, God. Oh, that was yeah, Scratch's birthday. Really me and him were a little intoxicated. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he's the one who leaked the blue Martian. I was so excited. Like I could finally talk. <laughs> that that whole day it was just everybody feeling great. Who leaked it? Oh, Scratch. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, we can't tell Scratch anything anymore, I guess. <laughs> Scratch no. is a leaker. <laughs> Scratch, if you're listening, I'm listening to you. I'm on to you. I'm on to you. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> if you if they tell you if they tell you they have a secret, just get them drunk. It'll eventually come out. Yeah. No. <laughs> and then uh, Chuck oh, with his never-ending birthday songs is hilarious. <laughs> Go back and listen to that episode, folks. I love that song. I can't wait for my birthday in November because I expect to hear that song. <laughs> <laughs> I'll think about it. Phone call one in the morning. <laughs> I don't doubt it. <laughs> I would think uh, maybe uh, one in the morning depends on what it is because I may or may not be awake. <laughs> well, what? when Chuck was in California, I used to call him early every day. Oh yeah, because your the time zone is be... way off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he wouldn't think he's about genius. it. He's calling me like at five a.m. You know, and I'm like, why are you calling me right now? <laughs> it's like I'm up now, so we might as well talk. I'm over here eating lunch and Chuck's still asleep. I'm like, what the hell are you doing, Chuck? <laughs> Time difference. Time zones. It's no different now. I'm still asleep whenever you're up. So that's fine. We this this conversation completely deteriorated. So if anybody's still listening, you know, the Blue Martian, you know, we're up to episode four now. We got about five more to go before Zach gets it done for uh um, what's that show? Trog, mm-hmm. at least. Trog. Yep. Well, yeah. So, this, so we're, we're in. Uh, uh, we recorded episode seven. Oh wow! You've already recorded oh, yeah, episode, episode seven? seven. Yeah, we're. I mean, we're almost done with episode seven. So. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Folks, it's July, and around here, we like to tell America Happy Birthday, America. And uh, Zach, I think y'all are giving away. <laughs> a car this month, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, at the end of the month, we're giving away a Roadster pickup truck that we built in a weekend. And uh, it's pretty simple. It's just a uh, it's a, pick- a Roadster pickup truck, and it's got a four-banger in it. And uh, we painted it and did a couple things in a weekend on it. And it's a good driver. Drive it all around town. It's ready to be hot routed pretty much. What is the, the deal on the, the giveaway for it? It's just a promotion for my buddy who's uh, just opened up his website. It's Mechanics website. They got uh, mechanic soap bars and uh, like hand lotion, and they're gonna come out with some more stuff later, some gloves and stuff like that. So, to promote his website and his products, um, we're giving away the truck. And all you have to do is just buy anything off the website. Okay, so it's just like a dollar amount would get you an entry fee into the the raffle for it, or. However, that that all works. Yeah. Okay. Oh, awesome, yeah, you, man. Yeah. If you spend a hundred bucks, you get a hundred entries. Oh, t- damn. <laughs> That's not a bad deal at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's Chuck, good stuff too. I'm not just you know trying yes, to ma'am. sell you on anything. I'm ordering right now. Chuck, we need a raise so I can go <laughs> buy a hundred dollars worth of crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need a hundred entries I'm right now. For- well, isn't it, isn't it right go. now? Isn't it like 10 times the entries or something, Zach? Yeah, it is isn't 10 like, times the entries right now. Yeah, so if you did if you did uh, $100, it would actually be it's a thousand. A thousand, a thousand entries. Yeah. I'm going to need that ASAP. Yeah. <laughs> so for $10, you get a, for $10, you get 100. 100 entries. Go I mean, you had soap. me at 1,000 entries. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, you had me at 1,000. <laughs> greasy, greasy, greasy garage. I think he just came out with his... Uh, is uh hand knuckle cream stuff or whatever. Yeah, knuckle too. butter. 
I like knuckle butter. Yeah, I like where actually, this is going. It's pretty good. This, I mean, we're yeah. like stepping on some real fine like <laughs> eggshells right now with these words that we're using in this discussion today. What knuckle butter? <laughs> What's wrong with Man knuckle butter? butter? That just doesn't sound right. <laughs> Listen, like what well, you know. So here, <clears throat> stand by for a second. So, after a hard day's work of spraying man glitter, nothing feels better than rubbing knuckle butter on your hands from Greasy Garage. There you go. <laughs> if they don't sell 10 Thanks. bottles of this stuff right now, I, 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 I just don't believe it. I don't believe it. Chuck, that was the <laughs> best commercial I've ever heard in my life. You're welcome. So, what I'm here for. <laughs> but I do I do I'm like the sure idea of winning for. this. Uh, so, yeah, normally it's funny because normally we give Chuck shout outs on the show and he just happens to be on the show today. So we can just tell him directly what we need. <laughs> oh, I don't get a shout out today. No, usually it's usually it's a usually it's a Chuck's going to be mad about this. <laughs> that is that is definitely a, a normal Scratch is going to be mad about this. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Scratch will be mad. I think it'll be fine. He won't be mad until we say reflections. No, man glitter. Or, or fridge. Or fridge. Or fridge. Don't or say fridge. fridge. Yeah, call yeah, call a uh call a uh uh F one hundred truck a fridge truck. He gets he's he's not really happy about that either. Oh man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to get Scratch on the show again. I I feel like there's a lot of questions we to be answered. We need defending. Like now we're getting their side. Now we need the defending person to be like, "Well, <laughs> fuck." Part two. <laughs> right. <laughs> Here, here's my rebuttal to that. <laughs> I love like, it. This isn't even true. And it's like, yeah, it is. I'm like, no, it's not. All right, fine. <laughs> Episode twenty-eight. We're still going at this battle. <laughs> Oh, if anybody's man. still listening, they're probably thinking, like, what is wrong with these people? You know, It's Monday. Well, that's what's is, wrong. This is why, no. Them <laughs> so is this still the Blue Martian update? Because I feel like we're not Blue Martian updating anymore. <laughs> you know? We're totally Blue Martian. At least we thank this. our sponsors. I mean, well, we're... That intro. The, intro, the intro, though, is utterly amazing. Oh, I yes. No, know. Lane listens to it every single fucking day. I hear it. He's just like yeah. he'll do the sound effects <laughs> with his mouth. I'm like, we don't need that. We don't need that. They did it. You it's don't need loud. to do it. It's too loud. Exactly. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I hear. <laughs> it is four in the morning. So hold on. I want to hear these. Sa- I want to hear these sound effects. <laughs> oh, so can, hold on. A second. No, but, I can't do it. Guys, my guys, phone is guys, connected to the podcast equipment. No, you guys, you guys chat. You guys chat among yourselves for a minute. Oh no! I gotta pull something up on my computer. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> you guys chat among yourselves. Me. Zach, Sam, tell us, tell me us what you're doing. <laughs> Zach, Zach, tell us what we're doing next on the Blue Martian. Well, the next thing that I'm doing is uh, cutting out the rear part of the frame, putting those Bowling Brother kickups on there. They, uh, Trent actually went over to Bowling Brothers and filmed them making the, the rear kickups for our frame. So I can't wait to see that. I haven't actually seen that yet, but um, I'm stoked about putting them on. Everyone always. Cuts the frame, raises it, then just fills the gap. But uh, Bowling Brothers actually did a mandrel bent square tubing for the back of the frame, so it's going to look real professional, real professional in the back. Much better than that 1950s frame built. Oh, I know. I might, I might cut that out and use that as an anvil on the table. What they use? They use like some big ass <laughs> C channel on the back. <laughs> Weighs the weighs the back of the car down by 100 pounds. Well, maybe that's why it was uh, lifting the wheels off the front. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they had weights in the back. Yeah, it was a tip truck. On purpose, though. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't purposeful. It was just on there. Yeah. Well, the uh, the body was solid welded to the frame, front to back, all the way down. We had to cut it all out just to get the body off the frame. I couldn't imagine when he was had that 283 in there and when he was taken off. I bet you has been in the frame. It hadn't been opening the doors on like hard launches, just twisting the whole body. Yeah. Or if it did open the doors when he did that. Or if he torch welded the door shut. 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, it is a roadster pickup, yeah. right? You could just jump over it. <laughs> well, it, it is channeled seven inches, so there's really no need for a door. No, Yeah, no need for a it's door at all at that point. Yeah, well, with a seven-inch channel, you only have you only have four inches of door left that are above the frame, don't you? <laughs> oh, dude, wait till you see me sitting in it. I look like Yogi Bear sitting on top of a go kart or something. <laughs> 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 the floor like is so a, high in it. <laughs> it's like a crazy episode of like wacky races or something. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Oh, I can hear it. I can it already is. hear what Chuck's got going on. Oh, <laughs> so, the Blue Martian with Zach Park <laughs> and his 1928 Ford. What as he restores it into a 1960s East Coast hot rod from outer space. There we go. You know what's funny? Is that you You did that as if you were reading it as it was going. No, you watched he that. Nice. He is, he you is. have watched that way too much. <laughs> <laughs> you have watched There's that only movie. three episodes. Yeah. He it's is, like, it's he like, has oh, watched this, it enough times. This video times. has 10,000 views. It's like 9,348 all... are all lame. <laughs> just over and over again. Listen to that. Just watching the intro, not actually watching the whole thing. Yeah, he just watches the intro. And he watch it That's He's his favorite part. Seen, a, seen an episode. <laughs> yeah, like, no, I have guys? no clue what the, what the Blue Martian even is. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to find out. <laughs> Everybody's heard the intro at least. So <laughs> now they got to go watch it. I'll, I'll record oh, myself man. doing that for you. You'll love it, and we'll we'll use it on something. He's It'll tried be great. many different voices. He's like, "What if we did it? What if we did it like this?" I was like, "Who's we? Like, <laughs> what are you talking about?" <laughs> It's just the. It, it's oh, awesome. I, it, is uh, is Retson working on that? Is that is that who put that together? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Retson yeah. Retson, so Retson, does. Yeah, Retson does a lot of our, uh, or a lot of our editing and stuff like that for all the videos on Rod Style TV. He loves editing stuff. He gets really excited about it. But yeah, he did that intro. Remember when he came up with that intro? I was like, man, that's so awesome. I love the little little dude at the end with a little gun that says. Like R and S on there, yeah, you know, yeah, that's it cool. Just, it just cracks me up. No, big big me, shout out to Retson for that. Uh, another one that's behind the scenes of a lot of things that go on with Rod and Style, and yeah, he's he's kicking ass, man. I I dig what he's doing. What's crazy is like also he's he's you know in, in his early twenties, you know, and everything he's doing and stuff like that, and he runs Bangers Modified. He's a huge Bangers guy, you know what I'm saying? So. That's funny, especially having a young kid like that. Remember when I first met him, and the first thing he ever shot for me is when I just had Cheaters of Culture. I hadn't even started Speeding Culture yet. and I had not even met Johnny yet from Gnarly. I barely knew Trent, but he came out and shot Santa Barbara Trog race for me. Mm-hmm. And I remember sitting, I think he had, at that race, he had just turned 21, maybe, or he was, wasn't 21 yet. I don't remember. Remember, I offered him a beer and there was something about he had just turned 21 or something. But so me and him sat and talked for a while. And I was like, well, you're uh, you're coming with me. And he's like, he's like, what do you mean? I said, you're coming with me whether you want to or not. And he goes, where are we going? I said, I have no idea. Well, we're going to do some cool shit, you know. <laughs> so fast forward. I mean, that was four or five years ago now, four years ago, three years ago. Mm. I don't know. Time flies when you're having fun. But, um, yeah, so he's editing videos for us. He's one of the owners of Rod and Style, actually, Rod and Style Productions. So. It's a, it's a good old time with him. So, yeah, he does a great job editing all this stuff and everything. He's the one that really kind of keeps it between him and Zach, especially with the Blue Martian. They kind of keep it in line where it's like the videos actually make sense and kind of flow together, you know, versus my ass would be like, oh, well, here's him painting it and here's him working on the frame. All in the same scene. <laughs> right. It's all here's it finished, well, it's, it's and nice. now let's look how it happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Completely like, out of nice. like I had fin- my. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've had my own YouTube channel for a couple of years, and I've been recording myself and editing myself. So it's nice to record a bunch of stuff and just send it over to Reds and like, all right, I'm done with it. (laughs) (laughs) Fix fix my mess up. Exactly. (laughs) But he does it so well. I would just make it into a Quentin Tarantino movie. We'd start at the end. Oh, I thought you were going to be like, and everybody dies. It's like. (laughs) Oh, Oh, yeah. That all might be. Yeah. The cops all rush in at the end. Think we yeah, when we're in our big big booth with one car, all of us in the same car. We should try to fit all of <laughs> the cars get in us. the booth. Let's let's well, do that. That's plan. Oh. <laughs> well, that's kind of our plan for some of the shows we do. We're just going to bring cars and just take over areas, you know. Yeah. Um, we have a tendency to do that. We just kind of, you know, last year at the Grand Nationals, it was kind of like, oh, I got a 10 by 30. You know, and I'm like, there's nobody here in this other space. So I just kind of start moving my merch around. <laughs> you know, and, nice. You know, I, I go by the yeah. Just go by the idea of you know, it's better to ask for forgiveness than it is for permission. Absolutely, you I know? do that every so, weekend when it comes to trying to get overtime. Yeah. Yeah. See, there you go. <laughs> just kind of do it, and then later you're like, oh shit, oops. So I wasn't why supposed why to did that? you work all, all these hours? Uh, was I not allowed to? Because you still got to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. It's like my bad. You know, exactly. But also, like as we as we start doing more and more shows and have more and more builds, you know, because we did, uh, you know, uh, today the Motormania recap uh, episode was released, you know, and we did the uh, uh, Hall of Enchantment, as uh, <laughs> Scratch likes to call it, and you know, and that was that was a great show. But we showed up like with the Texas tub, uh, Danny's car, the Grinch, uh, which you guys haven't seen it. I posted a couple of times on. Cheers to Culture and Ron style, but it's the one that uh, the green Model A sedan uh, yeah, yeah. set up like a drag drag car. Yeah, we took that up there, and then we took my car to Desert Queen up there and stuff. And, you know, we just kind of – it's funny. We just kind of take over everywhere we go, and that's kind of our plan with a lot of these bills, like the Blue Martian. And then, you know, we did the Texas Tub, which we just released a video of with Scratch painting the flames on the Texas Tub. And uh, we're actually about to do probably an overhaul on – the Desert Queen, um, because I uh, had Motor Mania, I actually messed up my fan because my shroud flexed, I guess, and it ate my fan. Oh, no. And so, yeah, since it ate my fan, you know, it didn't hurt anything else. The shroud's a little damaged. It, it's fixable, and then the fan's a little messed up. But since I did that, I have to put a cam in it. Um, <laughs> yeah, that works. These tires got to <laughs> so, go. It, yeah. <laughs> Is that how it works, works, Zach? You're like, well, I got to yeah, take the fan exactly. off. I might as well put a cam in it. You know? Yeah. It's like, you're just, it's four bolts. You know what? Four <laughs> bolts later. Well, I'm in there, you know? You know? That's how I explain it to the wife anyways. Well, I have to take yeah. it out anyways, you know? So. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that's how you get away with stuff like that. You're like, well, I got to take this fan off. So <laughs> I might as well just take it all apart, you know? Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. You know, it's like ideas, shows and stuff. Okay. It's it's like you know you got to do an oil change. Well, I'm just gonna swap the the engine out of this one and put the the engine in this one. And it's got new oil in it. <laughs> I had a totally different analogy, and I was like, man, I sound like such a wife. I was like, it's like when you try and clean like the closet, you take all the shit out of the closet, and then it's an even bigger mess. And you're like, well, I was gonna do it anyway. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, well, fuck. Now I just made a bigger mess. <laughs> Yeah, Pretty much the same. We, that was a ter- we've that actually was a been doing analogy. this lately. You know, that was terrible, Shut Sam. Up. No, it terrible. wasn't. It was a good analogy. Any women? It's like when you drive. It's, it's like when you drive a Buick that the turn signals don't work on, and that's then you're what like, I got oh, hands I might for. Well replace that's all the what, wiring. That's what I got hands for. Yeah, yeah, we're not replacing <laughs> wiring. That's for damn sure. No, I'm not going to do. Somebody else is going to do that. I'll gladly pay someone else to do that. I ain't doing that shit. All right, y'all heard it here, folks. Too bad you're not closer. <laughs> I do. <don't. laughs> the the Buick is magically going to end up at Zach's place to get wired. I'm just gonna, yeah, it's just gonna. Be like, hey, I'm here to drop it off <laughs> later. <laughs> Good. He can take that screen out of the middle of the dash too. No. <laughs> <It's> mine. 
Because it looks terrible. I know it does. But that's why I want something made cover to it cover it. That's what I want. I want a plate to go on top of it so that it covers that so nobody can see it. I don't care for it. I just I just like the, the, the features that it comes with. <laughs> <laughs> no, the features are nice. I mean, I have Bluetooth and the hot rod's great. You, got, you just gotta hide it well. How do know? I have? How do I have like a six? A what? 62, 61 year old? How many? Sixty. I don't know. I'm not doing math right now. Yeah. How do I have a sixty plus year car and I have a backup <laughs> camera and my husband doesn't even have one in his modern day truck? Like, how does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> Both my cars have backup cameras. <laughs> hey, the fifty. So hold on. The fifty nine Buick has a backup camera on it. Yep. Yeah, it came. Uh, it was a very, very wow. rare uh, feature. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, that was something uh, that the. It actually, it just it just comes with a with a butler that beeps as you back up. <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> he lives in the trunk. This is one of the really the rare trunk Buicks. Is the same size as a small New York apartment. Exactly. <laughs> These, yeah, that's facts right there. I was gonna say it's one of the really rare Buicks that was built in Japan at the time. They were way ahead of us at that time, right? <laughs> I think so. Uh, I don't know, 59? I don't know about I think that. Was, far, yeah. No, no, they probably oh, weren't. Yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think they were still recovering from an accident or something. Yeah, no. You know, <sighs> at that point. I'm not sure. That yeah. conversation degraded quickly. Super rare. So, yeah, 59. Blue Martian. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps going got, back to this we, car we I've never have, seen. We just have all these blue cars. Like we all have blue cars, I've um, realized. Yeah. Which is which is hilarious because Scratch is not a fan of blue. <laughs> we were actually having a discussion today. So blue is actually my favorite color. But you know, Scratch, if you guys know anything about Scratch, he loves the color green. You mm. know? And, I do too. But um like it's funny because we were talking about actually today of like, he's like, there's only like two shades of blue that he really likes, but like everywhere, everywhere, everything we're doing is like a blue car or something. Something's blue at some sort. The ironic part is blue is my favorite color, but the next two bills I want to do are green. <laughs> so you've been hanging out with scratch you know. for too long, man, too long. You know what? Well, yeah. Really well, quick, really funny story about that though is that when I showed Scratch, Scratch is one of the first people that has seen the Mercury that that uh, we bought, and when I told him that I wanted to paint it, he was like, "Well, I actually kind of like the blue," and I was like, "No, absolutely not!" Like, like immediately, I was like, "No, I'm not keeping it blue," but he, yeah, he he was more along the lines of wanting it to stay blue. It's like ah. Well, your Merc. Like, yeah, the Merc. Well, it's because your Merc is that dark blue. Uh, it's a dark blue. Well, I don't know because you haven't posted pictures of it yet. So now I'm just gonna. I'm gonna tell the whole world. Blue. So it's that. Yeah, it's that dark blue metallic, and that's actually one of the blues that he really likes. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I think I think your car that blue with the scallops. I think it looks good. With the. Uh, it was a cream colored scallops. I'm just gonna put all the information. I know. I was like, yeah. damn, all right. That's blue, not that blue four door Merc you got with. Uh, That's with not the, That dark blue metallic with the uh, you know cream colored scallops. Like, yeah. right. yeah. like that the scratch scallops. on that <laughs> corner. Because the headlights are French, right? The headlights yeah. are French. It's lowered the four inches go around in the, the back. headlights and back. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's got the scallops on the hood, and then it's got the the big skillet. Uh, I guess that I don't know what to call it, but a spaced out scallop down the side, and yeah, then the scallop yeah, on does. the uh, scallops on the uh, skirts. On the skirts, yep. <laughs> See, you act like I don't pay attention, Lane. I know these things. <laughs> I He's remember this. And you're gonna go on this phone. You're gonna listen, Zach. Don't don't, don't don't call me out, Zach. Don't call me out. What I do know is that. I'm going to laugh at you whenever uh, you guys go cruising and Sam is already back at the house and you just left because you're driving a flathead with a three speed, <laughs> three speed with an overdrive. <laughs> oh, the overdrive. Cause that's going to save you whenever she takes off in that big old nail head, nail head with a two <laughs> speed. Know. Yeah, so. Oh, see? <laughs> yeah, better. It's not, it doesn't make it speed. even. Yeah, but which one that sounds better? It doesn't make better. it even. I haven't heard the Merc yet, up. but I would imagine the Buick sounds fucking mean. Exactly. So, I know that. <laughs> I know for always, fact that the, always better. the Buick sounds fucking mean. So there's no no doubt about that. I haven't heard the Merc yet, folks. <clears throat> I have bought this car without even seeing it in person. That's smart. 
super smart. No, our friend well, went to go nice see it. It looks nice in the pictures. <laughs> no, our friend, our good oh. friend Luke went to go see it, and he got to make sure everything, because he has the same car, right? Uh, no, his is a 53. Oh, okay. Same uh, engine setup, though. Mm. Flathead with a three-speed oh, with so. overdrive. Yeah, it's got the ABA in it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Luke went and took a took a look at it for us, and and uh, and he actually sent video of the car and pictures of it all the way around and everything. So it, it'll be home in a, about three or four weeks. Mm-hmm. And you know, by the time this we're, episode comes <laughs> out, we're, about that. we're we're famous for buying cars <laughs> and then waiting like two three months later to go get them because we just don't have the time to go get them. I was gonna say them. Sam bought her Buick without seeing it in person. I bought it in <laughs> July and it didn't come home until November Thanksgiving weekend. That was my Thanksgiving <laughs> yeah. gift to myself. Yeah. So. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, the guy was really. Well, was, I mean, I can't say much. I bought. Go ahead. The the oh the car owner had it. He was cool with it. He's like, I don't care. It's cool. I get to look at it still. And then our buddy who went to go get it, Ethan, he was like, Hey, I'll go get it. And then he randomly texts us like right before Thanksgiving. He's like, Hey, so uh, my wife doesn't want to go, so I'm gonna go this weekend. It'll be there Sunday. And I'm like, Oh shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He he made like a 20 hour trip to Illinois and back. Like like 20 hours up, 20 hours back, and he added to us by Sunday. Yep. Yeah, it absolutely wild. Right. So, all right, folks, we have oh, rambled awesome. and just rambled. But that's what we're known for. But we are known for that. You're right. <laughs> but so if, now it became a Blue Martian slash Rod style update slash shenanigans. Shenanigans reflections. <laughs> <laughs> reflections. This is our. This is our. You guys are really. This is the you guys end. are really hating, hating on my uh, hating on my thing. We're not. Oh, we love second. it. We got, one more, we got one more sponsor for the uh, this podcast. You ready? Mm-hmm. That's a uh, Dallas Blonde by Deep Ellum Brewing Ooh. Company. So, yeah, that sounds fresh, good. refreshing on this hot Texas. I just spilled some on myself on this hot <laughs> Texas day. <laughs> It's so hot outside. We're just pouring the beer straight onto us. <laughs> not even going. Not even trying to drink it. <laughs> Why is there man glitter all over my beer? Man glitter. <laughs> no, you, you gotta, you gotta you wash that man glitter down somehow. Oh, yeah, we have to get sponsored by a flake company and have them change their name to man glitter. This has to happen. No. <laughs> Somebody out there is going to start their own flake company, and I know they're going to call it Man Glitter. And you heard it on Rod and Style Radio. <laughs> Stupid. The other thing that Rod I need to throw out there. Man Glitter. Yes. The other thing that I absolutely need to throw out like there reflections. is. Uh, reflections. Exactly. Penelope. Red Reflections. <laughs> That's what it's going to be called. <laughs> And folks, if you Shamrock. ever hear, if you ever hear anybody refer to a rusty thumb, you heard it on Rod and Style Radio. <laughs> rusty thumb chuck. <laughs> well, so I can't get a nickname every time you guys are on the podcast. <laughs> Nobody will know who you are. They exactly. won't know what to call you. Yeah. Well, I can't remember them all. <laughs> no. The best thing about being truck, everybody knows who I am, but nobody knows who I am. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, yeah. I mean, these are facts. I, I think we threw out to the world who you were more than anybody else. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm nobody. I'm not out there as much as you guys are. I just stay in the background. Hi, I'm Chuck. Yeah, no. <laughs> he, he was like, oh, I'm a very quiet person. And then the next week, we posted a picture of him and what he looks like. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, I like to keep my life private. Oh, here's a picture of Chuck. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Who runs like all these different pages. <laughs> all right, folks. Incognito. We will stop the rambling and we'll let you get back to your normal daily lives of whatever you do on a Monday. Um, if you dig what we're doing, go and find us on whatever platform you're listening to podcasts on, whether it be Apple or Spotify or any of them, really leave us a rating and review. And of course, share it with your friends because that's how we make all of this happen and, and get onto bigger platforms. So 
folks, uh, as you've heard today, we were talking about the Blue Martian. Go find it on Rod and Style TV. That is the YouTube channel for us. And you know, and also just go and find the link tree on any of our social media to find all of these pages that we are promoting. And uh, I don't know why Sam's holding up her phone right now. I really don't. Why are you going to throw me out like that? Because <laughs> like, you can read it just the <laughs> No, the I don't like to. Can. I don't know how to read. I don't know how to read, sir. I don't know what this reading is. So, uh, Chuck, do you have anybody uh, you need to give some shout outs to right now? Uh, you know, I want to thank one, all the sponsors that helped us with the Blue Martian. I'm sure Zach will name them all off. And then, you know, we talked about earlier about people behind the scenes, you know, especially Retson for taking all our shit with editing these videos and stuff like that. And of course, <laughs> Zach for helping with the Blue Martian build, you know. Specifically, this podcast. I got many more people to thank in life, but we don't have time for that. <laughs> and Zach, uh, you want to give uh, some shout outs to all the sponsors for the Blue Martian? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Bowling Brothers, they're helping out a lot. So that's Bowling Brothers Early Iron, is their actual name. Then uh, uh, Millworks, they're really hooking us up with a lot of good stuff. All the suspension is going to be modern suspension on the Blue Martian. Uh, so it's going to be able to handle all the teenage style driving I'm going to do in it. So that's good. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, then I'll, I'll, I'll obviously a uh, to slick culture since they're going to be a big sponsor. That's going to be awesome. And uh, yeah, no, I awesome. want to thank. Uh, <laughs> yeah, great. Then yeah, you know, obviously I got to thank Speed of Culture and Chuck and Rod and Style and everything. It's just all working out really well. And Scratch, you know, he's he's helping out a lot. So. I just appreciate, you know, doing a build, a collaboration with a bunch of guys who, you know, that get it, you know, that we're on the same brainwave. So it's all working out really well. Awesome, man. All right, folks. Well, we will let you back to it. So remember, stay wild.